Today the scripture readings give us guidelines on how we should deal with conflicts and division within the church. Three broad principles we must bear in mind. The first important principle is that we must be clear of our intention, our objective. As Christians, when we want to resolve a situation, a conflict, a scandal, the objective is never to punish, to take revenge, or to shame the offender. That is not Christian. If we approach a person, it is because we want to restore, to redeem, not to condemn, not to curse, not to strip the person who is the offender of his dignity. This is never the case. God wants us to preserve our dignity. We need to respect even people who have failed us, who have failed to live the gospel life. That is why any work of reconciliation must be done with love, for love, and in love. If love is not the motive, is this not a primary intention, then you will behave just like the rest of the world. An eye for an eye makes the whole world go blind. The world will know that we are Christian only when we love one another. But if we are fighting all the time, if we are divided, not only the people who are in conflict will suffer, the whole Christian community reputation will be destroyed. Those who are working in church, serving in church, should be people who are happy, who are joyful, a spirit of humility, a spirit of service. Secondly, not just only you must be clear of objective intention, it must be done in the context of the Christian community. So when there is something that is not right with another person, first and foremost, it must be done privately between the person's concern, not to bring it out to the open and leave the person without his dignity. We must always try to protect the dignity of everyone, including the sinner, including the offender, because the purpose is to restore, to heal, not to destroy. We must be very clear about this objective. And that is why when we have a conflict with someone, we try to talk in a fraternal way, trying to see where the person is coming from, what are his difficulties. And if that is not possible, then we bring one or two along, some matured people, some wise people, who can help us to mediate. Mediation is very important, to mediate and to bring peace, understanding, so that there is some objectivity, because sometimes we are so hurt and so wounded, we cannot see our problems clearly. That's why we need to have mediators. When that does not work, then we bring to the authorities. But that is always the last. When you bring to the authorities, that will be the final decision. And you know, when authorities make decisions, I can guarantee you, nobody is happy. Everybody is a loser. Because no one will be happy even when the authority makes the decision on what must be done. So that's why it's very important that in instances of conflicts, we try to settle it on the very personal level, always in the context of Christian community, Christian love. And this is where we come to the third principle. The third principle, therefore, of reconciliation, it must be done within the Christian spirit, the gospel Justice is not so much the question of uh, maintaining our rights. Even Jesus, you know, he suffered unjustly, innocently, for the greater good of the person. And this is where, as Christians, it is not retaliation. Again, when we want to settle a conflict, there must be mutual love. 
We do it out of love and for love. So if we have no love, there is no reconciliation. I don't think any reconciliation can be done if you do not enter into a conflict, resolving it with this heart of love. Then we have the depth of uh, not only mutual love, mutual forgiveness. We are all sinners. We hurt one another. If you want to receive forgiveness, you must give. How can you ask forgiveness from God if you cannot forgive people who hurt you? What audacity do we have? We don't have. So if we want forgiveness from God, whom we have offended even more grievously, then we must forgive our brothers and sisters. And thirdly, we need the spirit of perseverance. We must be patient because we never give up hope on anyone. No matter how great a sinner, the church will not give up hope because Jesus never gave up hope on us. So long as a person is alive, we believe the grace of God can change the heart. And finally, the most important is the spirit of prayer. We cannot forgive. No reconciliation, no conflict can be resolved unless we bring them into prayer. It must be done in the spirit of prayer. Because when we pray, we begin to feel the wounds and the hurts of our enemies. When we pray, we remove the blindness from our eyes. Our own hurts that prevents us from loving our enemies. When we pray, then we know how much God has loved us. And so we, in turn, receiving His mercy and love, will be able to forgive others with the mercy and forgiveness we have received.